Today, uh, we're going to continue our series regarding the coming of the Lord. So this is our fifth lesson for the panorama of prophecy. For the last few weeks, we have shared that uh, the Lord is going to come as He promised. But the Bible is very clear that nobody knows when. And that's why we don't believe about what other people are saying to us that on December 21st, 2012, the end of the world will come. As far as the Word of God is concerned, no one knows. But the Word, the word of God is very much clear when He says, Jesus Christ said that we need to be ready. We need to be watchful because the Lord is going to give us many signs about His coming. And it did. He gave us so many signs, especially in the book of Matthew chapter 24. And there are so many prophetic messages that Jesus gave in that particular passage. And many of those prophecies are coming to pass. And one of them is, you know, the pestilence and, and wars and rumors of wars and kingdom against kingdom, earthquakes. And I have shared that these things are going to, they, they are going to happen in, in our generations and that it will going to increase and the whole world is going to be affected. But we as believers in the Lord, we need to be ready. We need to be watchful because even though these things are going to happen, we need to be aware at the same time that He promised those who will receive me and accept me, they will come with me. Because while Jesus Christ is still in heaven physically, he is preparing a place for those people who accepted Christ as their personal Savior in John chapter 14. And He is preparing a mansion. It's not just a place, but a mansion for those people who accepted Jesus Christ beginning John chapter 14, verse 1, up to several verses in the Bible, up to verse 6. And it's very, very important for us to understand that these things are happening even in our generation. So, another <coughs> prophetic message was written in the book of Daniel, chapter 12, that the prophet announced that in the last days, trouble and knowledge will increase. Even Jesus Christ himself that, you know, in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, beginning verse 36 to 39, that the end times will come like the days of Noah, where people are getting married and marrying and doing a lot of things. They are so busy about so many things of this world. They don't have time with God. Then all of a sudden, and will come. But those who are rooted and grounded in the Lord, those who accepted Jesus Christ, the Bible says that in the, first, in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, the Lord is going to take them away. We call it rapture of the church. In a twinkling of an eye, the Lord is going to remove the church. The church is not the building. The church is people is composed of people who accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior. So the Lord used several metaphors in the Bible describing the church. The building, the body, and the bride. And last week we have discussed the marriage supper of the Lamb. That one day when the Lord Jesus Christ is going to remove the church upon the planet Earth, there will be a seven-year tribulation. And then that seven-year tribulation, it will be hard for those people who will be left behind. So the Antichrist will come, and he will impose people to worship him in the middle of seven and a half tribulation. So during the first year of tribulation, the seven-year tribulation, he will give a uh, covenant of peace to Israel, that he will protect Israel, but in the middle of the of the middle in the middle of seven year tribulation, uh, on, in, after three and a half years, he will proclaim that he is God. And when he proclaimed that he is God, many nations of the world 
who rejected God and they have their own gods, they will also reject Antichrist and they will arise against the Antichrist and they will make their own uh, they will make their own uh, huge army to fight against um, the Antichrist. Jesus promised, I shall return. Actually, this word was a famous word from John Mapak, from uh, General MacArthur when he promised that he will return to the Philippines to liberate the Philippines during World War II. Jesus Christ promised that I will return. I am coming back again. Now the big question is, are we ready for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? For sure, December 21 is not the end of the world. Just continue your life. But you need to be, you know, aware that our spirit, soul, and body, this is very important before the presence of the living God. And we need to be ready and we need to be watchful about the end, about the second coming of the Lord. Now, there will be a conflict before the end of the seven year tribulation. And we call it Armageddon or Armageddon. And this war will be the last warfare this world will ever know. We think the King of Kings will come from heaven and claim that which is rightfully his. And Satan will be defeated and cast into the abyss or the lake of fire for 1,000 years. And that glorious day will come and it will begin earthly as the Lord Jesus Christ reigned. Then I saw three impure spirits that looked like frogs. They came out of the mouth of the dragon. Dragon is a symbol of demonic spirit. Frogs are also a symbol of demonic spirit. Out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet, they are demonic spirits that perform signs and they go out to the kings of the whole world to gather them for the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Look, I come like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake and remains clothed so as not to go naked and be shamefully exposed. Then they gather the kings together to the place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. So that word was only mentioned once in the Bible in this particular passage, but it is very, very important when it comes to a strategic war that time and even many, many years back. So these are facts simply stand out of the battle in that kind of uh, conflict, okay? So if you are going to study history and even the biblical perspective when it comes to this last warfare, or last conflict in that particular place. Okay. Armageddon comes from the Hebrew word, or Hebrew word Har Magidon, or Har Magidoni, which means Mount Megiddo or Mount of Slaughter. And that place was located in the plain valley of Jezreel, southwest of Nazareth. Many nations are involved in that conflict. Russia, which is called in the Bible, Gog and Magog, okay, Iran, Ethiopia, and, and, and the Middle Eastern countries, which is very, very clear in the Bible, like Syria, against Israel. Time will come that all these Middle Eastern countries and some part of the northern part of Europe, they will come against Israel. They will siege Israel. They will try to establish their kingdom in Israel. And then, that great battle will be fought at the end of time. It was one of the great battlefields of Canaan. It was there that Josiah in the Bible, the God-fearing king of Judah was killed when he went off to war against Egypt. It was there that Hazayah king of Judah was killed by Jehu. It was there that Deborah and Barak had their great victory over the Canaanites who had opposed the people of God. That place was a place full of bloodshed. This war is important because this battlefield represents the defeat of the enemies of God. So I thank God for the privilege and I went to the place I saw a vast plain 
of the valley. Napoleon once said that this place was a good place for war. So the battle of Armageddon takes place under the sixth plague. It is a physical battle because the whole earth will be affected by it. And then the leader of this conflict was no other than but Satan himself to fight against the king of kings. So therefore the Bible says in Revelation chapter 12 verse 12, Rejoice you heaven and you who dwell in them, but all to the earth and the sea. Because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury because he knows that this that his time is short. The reason that he will instigate the nations to come against the king of kings. Because Satan's time is short. He will recruit as many as he can. Many souls, millions of souls to bring them to hell. And Satan is going to stir up the nations to prepare the war. And the angels call upon to hold the wings of strife in order for them to battle against the enemy. And the Lord said that nation shall rise against nation. Now what's the purpose? The purposes of Armageddon. Number one is this. To finish God's judgment upon Israel. God is a God of love. For so many years God gave them love, mercy, Many chances, not only once, not only twice, not only thrice, but many chances to come and repent before God. But still the heart of man was full of pride and arrogance and disobedience. And time will come that the spirit of judgment will come. And God will show that He is the one who will judge the world. To finish God's judgment upon Israel, the Bible says, And I will pour out on the house of David, which is Israel, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication. In other words, God is giving them chance, many chances. They will look on me, the one they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns one only child, and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves or firstborn son. So there will be a judgment upon Israel, giving them another chance. What kind of uh, uh, a judgment is that? You're giving her, the Israelites, another chance to come to God. That's why in several parts of the Bible, God is going to raise up 144,000 people. These are Jewish evangelists who will evangelize during the year of tribulation. And they are not Jehovah's Witnesses. They are witnesses of the Lord. They are going to proclaim the gospel during the time of tribulation. To finish God's judgment upon Israel because He's going to perform His everlasting covenant. Remember what I said yesterday, uh, last week? The marriage supper of the Lamb is a great privilege for the church. And the witnesses, the guests, are no other than but the Israelites. The old saints of the old covenant. But time will come that the old covenant people is going to rise. At the same time, God who called them out of darkness. From the, beginning of, from the beginning of time of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he will perform his everlasting covenant. Nobody can break the everlasting covenant of God given to Israel. And the other purpose is to finalize his judgment upon the nations that have persecuted Israel. I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, which is the same place. Medo or the mountainous water. As God allows the nations of the world to inflict judgment upon Israel, He will be inflicting judgment on them. And the Bible says, And I will enter into judgment with them there. Jesus is going to meet the nations who will gather against Israel. And the Lord is going to wipe them out. So he will judge the nation of Israel to perform his everlasting covenant to them. And he will judge those nations who will always against Israel. Because during that time, all the nations who are supporting Israel, they are going to withdraw their support. And if you are studying the, the current news today, many nations who are supported, who supported Israel then, is now withdrawing their support little by little. Or even their financial support, they are withdrawing them little by little. Time will come. 
God will allow it until such a time that Israel will no longer depend on the economy of men, on the power of men, but on the power of the living God. Amen. And the third reason, the purpose of God is to formally judge all nations that have rejected Him. The Bible says, Coming out of His mouth is a sharp sword with which strike down the nation. In other words, He will rule them with an iron scepter. He threads the winepress of the fear of the wrath of God Almighty. The Lord is going to judge the nations who rejected Him. Those who don't believe in Jesus. Those who trample down the name of Jesus. Time will come. The Lord is going to judge those nations. Then after those judgments, the return of the King will take place. Revelation chapter 19 verses, verses 11 to 21 said that I saw heaven standing open and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called faithful and true. There is no other than, no, that, 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 the one being mentioned in that is no other than but the Lord Jesus Christ himself. With justice he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe deep in blood, and his name is the Word of God. Don't you know that, praise God, that's why we keep reminding you, you need to take care of the Word of God. The Word of God is powerful. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Unfortunately, there are so many people today, today they're saying they are, they are believers, and yet they don't have the Word of God. They don't even read the Word of God. Shame on them. But the Word of God is no other than but God Himself. And that is His name. And the Bible says the armies of heaven. They are not armies coming from the earth. They are armies from heaven. We're following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. So there will be a time that this king of kings will come with his armies. Who is these armies? This is the combination of the old saints and the new saints. The old covenant and the new covenant. You mean, Pastor, we are going to be a warrior during that time? So what kind of weapon are I going to bring? Is it AK-47, Arbalite, but... No, you will just follow the king. And you are not going to lift up your finger. Because the Bible says, coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. It is him who will strike the nations. Using his powerful sword, which is the word of God. Coming out of his mouth, a sharp sword with which strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He threats the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty on his robe and on his thigh. He has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. We will call us King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Who are the kings and who are the lords? Those people who come to know the Lord, they are the lords and they are the kings. But we have the king. We have the Lord. He is the Lord God Almighty. And we thank God. Hallelujah. You see what happened after that in verse 7. So an angel standing in the sun who cried in a loud voice to all the birds flying in the mid-air. Come, gather together for the great supper of God. So that you may eat the flesh of kings, generals, and the mighty of forces, and their riders, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, great and small. Then I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to wage war against the right and the horse and his army. Satan, the Lucifer, the false prophet, and Antichrist, they will come together with all his vast, with all their vast armies from different nations of the world and they will fight against the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, but they have no much because only one word of Jesus they will be destroyed. Hallelujah. You may say it's a mismatch. Yes. But God gave them so many chances to come and repent. Yet because of their pride and arrogance the judgment will come. 
And the Bible says that John saw it. And it saw the beasts and the kings of the earth. They will come together, but they will be destroyed. But the beast was captured, and with it, the post prophet who had performed the signs on his behalf. With his signs, he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. The two of them were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. The rest were killed with the sword coming out of the mouth of the rider on the horse. And all the birds gorged themselves on their flesh. See, the animals, the birds, at the time, they will have great feast. They will have great party during the time. And it's, the Bible is it's very clear that, you know, that these people, they will be killed, they will be destroyed. But those who accepted Christ as Lord and personal Savior, they will follow the Lord, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. Now, what's going to happen in that text? The Bible says, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. How is it going to happen? Thank God for that technology. Now we can see everything under different media sectors all over the world what's happening in other parts of this planet. So when Jesus returns, he will destroy his enemies and claim the world, which is rightfully his. This is the second coming, the actual physical second coming of Jesus. The second coming is not to be confused with the rapture. So the rapture is go we are going to meet the Lord Jesus Christ in the air. And then he will bring us into his place, the place where he prepared for us. And then in the seven year tribulation, there will be crowning. There will be tribulation. There will be Mary, the marriage supper of the Lamb. After seven years of tribulation, he will return with his armies. We are no longer bride, but warriors. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But we are not going to lift our fingers because our commander is chief. He will be the one to say a word. And just a word, he will be annihilate all his enemies. Revelation chapter 19, verse 14 says, And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in white linen, white and clean. So the nations of the world will be drawn to the scene of conflict by demonic powers, headed by Satan himself. Seemingly to settle once and for all whether the east or the west shall rule the world. And the armies of the east were scarcely be deployed in the Greek arena. When suddenly there is an invasion from outer space. Jesus will come as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. See, imagine during the time when the Antichrist declared, I am God, you need to, you need to worship me. And the many nations of the world will come against the Antichrist and one particular nation who is against the Antichrist is no other than but an Eastern nation who can raise up a 200 million army. Now during that time, nobody knows who is that nation who has all the capacity or capability to raise up a 200 million. But during 1940s and 1950s, when um, population explode and gathering data become more sophisticated up until today we all know that there is only one at least two nations who has all the capability to raise up 200 people that is India which has 1.1 billion or 1 point something 1 billion and, and China with 1.2 billion. But during the time of Mao Zedong, he was the only one who said, in just few months, we can raise up 200 million armies. And that was during the time of Mao Zedong. Is it possible? We don't know, but the Bible is very clear. Time will come. An Eastern nation will rise with 200 million and all the rivers from their nation leading to Israel at that time will become all dry.
The Bible says, and they will go out and look on the dead bodies of those who will rebel against me, the worms that eat, they will not die. The fire that burns them will not be quenched. And they will be lost unto all mankind. They imagine what will happen during the time. And also imagine this. What kind of weapon can destroy this kind of people? And this shall be the place where the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. Some scholar says it's nuclear. The Lord will sweep on to Jerusalem, and his feet will alight on Mount Olivet, which will instantly be split asunder. So other topographical changes throughout Israel will also take place. And the Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 1 to 12, the Dead Sea will be cleansed and the river will flow out of the temple of God. In Revelation chapter 20, beginning verse 1 to 3, with the return of the Lord, Satan is going to be incarcerated into the abyss for a thousand years. And all those rivers during that time is going to be dried up. So that all nations from different directions will come to Israel to converge. They will fight at the Christ. But all of a sudden, they, will, they are going to have a chase of heart and everybody will come against the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And after that great war, and then the, the return of Jesus as King of Kings, and then Jesus will wipe out those armies who will fight against Him, there will be the millennium. What is the millennium? <laughs> Latin word made up two words. Meaning means thousand and annum means years. Means one thousand years. So the millennium is a period of one thousand years. Begins with Christ's second coming third. He establishes his kingdom in Jerusalem and brings in a period of peace and justice on the earth. So the earth will become a theocratic <coughs> government. Headed no other than but Jesus Christ himself. As King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You mean, Pastor, the rapture will take place, it will bring us to heaven, then our Magdalene will take place, we will return to earth with the King, and then after the return of the King, there will be 1,000 years millennium. You mean we are going to stay back again here on earth? Yes. Now, why? For many reasons. Number one, to reward the people of God. Revelation 22, verse 12. Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me. And I will give to each person according to what they have done. The Lord is going to reward us. That's why... You need to have that foundation. Stones, precious stones, gold, precious stones that are that cannot be burned. It can be purified. Don't gather hay, stable, those things that can be easily burned. These our these things are our good works. The Bible says that we are saved not by good works. We are saved by faith. That after salvation, you need to do good things. And you have no idea everything that you do, even the smallest thing, is recorded in heaven. And time will come, whether you do it in the dark or you do it in the light. God is going to expose everything. And those that are easily burned, it will be destroyed. But those who are can purify like precious stone, it will stand forever. The reward to the people of God. The second purpose to respond to the prophet's prediction. In Psalm 72, kings and nations must worship Christ. 
the Messiah government must be established on David's throne. Israel must turn to righteousness and inherit her land forever. The nations must live in peace under Messiah's rule. And Christ must rule over Israel as her Messiah in an unbroken rule. Now it means to fulfill the words of the Old Testament prophets. Without the millennium, the Old Testament scriptures are left open-ended and unfulfilled. And that's the reason why God is going to fulfill every promise that He promised to His people. So the focus of God's promises to Israel was that she was and is chosen by God and His promise is an everlasting promise. The covenant of God is everlasting to His people. So the original people where God promised His everlasting covenant is the Israelites, not us. So the promise that God gave to us is the New Testament through the grace of Jesus Christ when He gave His life. So that's why, praise God, we are not the original uh, brunch. We are just adopted. We are just crafted. Grafted. We are just put in the original point. Now, the Bible says, because of the grace that Jesus Christ gave to us, anyone who committed sin, anyone who asked the Lord, Lord, forgive me, he or she will receive eternal life. This 1,000 years is just a physical experience for us to experience everything that God promises to everyone who follow the Lord. Whether they are Old Testament people or New Testament people. And not only that, but also to receive the answer to the disciples' prayer. Jesus taught his disciples to pray, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <coughs> and not only that, but also to re-emphasize man's depravity and the necessity of Christ's death. So Satan will be bound for a thousand years. And you will be shocked next week after a thousand years. See, you need to understand God is going to fulfill every promises for us to realize that every word of God is true and faithful. Amen? Amen. Now, during the time of tribulation, it's not in your outline, there will be five profiles of the millennium. I mean, after the tribulation and the return of the king and during the millennium time, then there will be a time of great peace. There will be time of great peace, even the animal kingdom. There will be no fear, even to entertain a lion or, or a tiger. So there will be peace. Even in the animal kingdom, and between man and the beasts of the field, there will be no armies, no military budgets, and no wars. So what the United Nations has tried to do, Jesus will bring to pass. It will be a time of prosperity. You don't need to confess the spirit of prosperity because there will be prosperity during the time. God is a good economist. You don't need to pay, to pay bills. And that's the reason why there are so many people that are working very hard because they need to, you know. So according to Ezekiel 34, listen, I will make them in the places all around my hill a blessing and I will cause showers to come down in their season. There shall be showers of blessing. Then the trees of the field shall yield their, their evidence, the earth shall yield her increase, they shall be safe in their land, and they shall know that I am the Lord when I have broken the bands of their yoke and delivered them from the hand of those who enslaved them. So the desert, even the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. There will be a time of prosperity, there will be a time of purity. Sin will be kept in check. And disobedience will be dealt with efficiently. Christ's rule will be righteous and his kingdom will be holy. But if you will study that next week, it's all about heaven and hell. But before heaven and hell, we need to 
see what will happen after the millennium, still a lot of people doesn't have the guts to accept Jesus Christ. Still, they gave them a thousand years of experience of glorious rule of the Lord Jesus Christ. Still, those people are disobedient and proud and arrogant. Those who were born during the time of millennium. Now, during the time of millennium, it will be a time of prolonged life. Because of 1,000 years, we know that life spans for hundreds of years, long before the Genesis flood, and declines steadily thereafter. But in the millennium, people will once again live long lives. They may reach 600, and 700, and 800. In fact, a hundred-year-old person will be considered to be still a child. So there will be a prolonged life. Nowadays, in the book of Psalms 90, praise God, if you reach 60 years old and 70, you are blessed. Amen? Amen. During the millennium, you can reach more than that. But for sure, you will not reach more than a thousand. Because it's only one thousand. Okay? It will be a time of prolonged life, and then it will be a time of personal joy. There, is no, there will be no pain. No, there will be no pain, no, no tears, no, no problems, no burdens, no happiness. And because of the rule of the righteous king with justice will keep life in balance around the world, many of the causes of heartache will be removed. So the millennium will be a time of unprecedented joy as a natural byproduct of peace. So you can walk anywhere. So the whole earth is at rest and quiet. They break forth into singing. Amen? Amen. Praise God. But before you reach millennium, we need to see it's under a rapture. Amen? Because we don't want to be left behind. Because that's a determining factor during that time of tribulation. So imagine when Jesus Christ destroyed the armies, he didn't destroy yet the nations. That's why during that time still there are still, there are still some, some unbelievers all over the world who can produce unregenerated people. So what's our job during that time? I have no idea. During the millennium, in heaven we have a job. Praise, worship the Lord. Magnify His name. Okay. During the millennium, no idea. Maybe governor, mayor, you know, but not corrupt politician. I have no idea. One thing I know, the ruler is Jesus. We will just follow him. We will just obey him. Good for a thousand years. Okay? Now, before, the, before I end. The day is coming as Paul wrote. When every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is for It is very powerful even in the book of Philippians chapter 2. That at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on, on earth, in earth and on and under the earth. Every knee will bow in heaven and then where? On earth and then under the earth. Okay, in heaven. That's why we don't worship any idols, we worship God. On earth, that's why we don't fear men, we fear God. Under the earth, I don't know if you still believe in uh, spirit beings like Nuno uh, Sapunso, whatever. Those dwarfs or whatever, you know, who pieces. Uh, White lady. The Bible says every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Let's give the word to